Sometimes the best villains are the ones you understand, the ones who you know why they're doing what they're doing, and you might even want them to succeed in some small capacity. Yet there are good villains who are despicable, deplorable, loathsome pieces of doo-doo, and that works just fine. Although I do prefer a villain where I can latch onto them and feel something towards them other than just pure hate. Sadness, happiness, anger, doesn't matter, as long as I feel sympathetic towards their situation, I will most likely enjoy them. And Negan, you feel a lot towards Negan. You will laugh with this guy, you will cry with this guy, and you will want to kill this guy. Like Rick, Negan is a struggling character trying to figure things out, and that is when The Walking Dead is at its best, when these characters are confused on how to make the apocalypse work for them. Negan doesn't always go about things the right way, but he does try. For the most part, when we first meet this smug, beautiful man, he is a villain, he is evil, you do not feel sympathy for the devil here. Viewers watched on their Samsung UE49KS8000s as Negan killed not just one, but two of our favorite guys. It is shocking and it begins a painful downfall for the show as a whole, but that is just a coincidence. A lot of people stopped watching after Glenn died, and I don't necessarily agree with them there. I don't think this incident should have caused someone to stop watching a show. Glenn's and Abraham's deaths are kinda justified if you're looking at it from Negan's perspective, which we'll get to shortly. Bad writing and lazy directing is what should stop you watching the show. So you can leave like five episodes later. Glenn was a great character, but sadly he wasn't. As for the justification, the way Negan sees it is punishment for Rick messing with him and his gang. This is how Negan has got used to the apocalypse, through violence and fear, and in his very own episode in season 10, we see the origins of him coming across all this stuff, and how it sways him in the direction of a mass murdering baseball player. You're not supposed to like Negan here, he is the worst, he is a diesel for the entirety of season 7 and 8. We do see that human element to him sometimes, but those insecurities are quickly masked by charisma and just being a dick. He will do the most petty things to wind people up, and does arguably the most heinous thing in the entire show, steal Rick's mattress. Negan is a meanie and we want Rick to kill him, but then something big happens. Coral dies. That's Rick's son in case you gave up on the show. This has a profound effect on Rick and Negan. They both like Coral. I mean, of course, Rick liked him, duh, but Negan liked Coral as well, apart from that out-of-character moment when he tried to kill him, but we don't talk about that. Coral's dying wish was for both Rick and Negan to stop fighting and live peacefully with each other. It's literally all he wants, and it's beautiful. However, both guys don't really want to do that. They think it's too late. Something happens here, and that's that you realize that Rick and Negan are two sides to the same coin. Rick is an insane person and has done some pretty violent acts that are honestly up there with what Negan has done. And Rick's meant to be the good guy. Sure, he's mainly violent towards those who deserve it, although Negan fought Glenn and all the other people he killed deserved it. This is meant to be a twisted world with twisted characters and ideologies. When you realize that Negan has basically gone through the same as what Rick has, it makes you more sympathetic towards him. You feel bad for the guy, even if he is an asshole. That's why when he and Rick are fighting, it's told to us that this conflict is stupid. Rick tells us it's stupid. That's his character arc, learning to be human again. It's amazing. Watch my video on Rick after this, I talk more about it. Also like and subscribe, comment, it helps a lot and I'll love you forever. Rick spares Negan's life after being in a war with him for a while and wants to move on. Even Negan wants to move on. He's locked in a cell for a bit, does some good deeds, although he's not fully redeemed yet. Or I don't think ever will be. He definitely fights for that redemption, which is far more interesting than just excusing him. I like that episode where he breaks out of jail and has a little adventure and just realizes how much he's lost. He did try to build something. He called this group the saviors for a reason. He just went about things the wrong way. We only hear snippets of his past, like information on Lucille and whatnot but we never see what he went through with her. That is until the final episode of season 10. Here's Negan. That is the name of the episode. And it's such a fitting title as well. Tells you everything you need to know. Here's Negan. Here he is. This episode documents his life during the early days of the apocalypse, as well as before the zombies, where he plays Gears of War. Should have been Halo, but whatever. 
Now this is it. This is the episode that changed mine and a lot of other people's perspectives on his character as a whole. He's always been light right from the beginning, but not really sympathetic. You never felt bad for the guy apart from some moments. This episode is here to change that and make you genuinely care for him. Lucille is also a really great character and you can tell Negan loves her and feels guilty for cheating on her before the apocalypse started. I think that's Negan's defining character trait. Guilt. We see it here and we'll see it later on. He always holds on to guilt and that's such a fascinating trait. Negan's guilt for Lucille is something he's held on to forever and this episode's ending is about him letting go of that. Him burning the bat is a metaphor for him letting go of that pain. This episode not only shows you his past life, it also shows you how he came to be the leader he was and why he came up with the name The Saviors. Like a lot of people, he's not a bad guy at the start of the new world. He's dazed and confused, he's adapting to it, trying his best to survive, as well as looking after his sick wife. We see that he was just a regular guy with occasional violent outbursts, but due to the circumstances, had to change. A lot of what I like about The Walking Dead is how real the characters, and especially villains, felt. You didn't agree with most of them, but you understood why they were the way they were. Shane was ahead of the curve, and a bit nuts. The governor wanted what was best for his people, and was a bit nuts. The cannibals started eating people out of fear, and were a bit nuts. Even Alpha had a realistic motivation. She was also a bit nuts. Maybe I just like Negan because he's not completely insane. Negan's not always doing the right thing, and he enjoys pissing people off. Even at the end of Here's Negan, he just smiles at Maggie because he knows how much she hates him. This episode is here to show you that like everyone else in this world, he's a struggling human being, and that's why he gets our sympathy. I like that he was always growing throughout the show, and my favorite bit of growth comes from his guilt towards what he did to Glenn. He doesn't really care about Abraham. I don't think anyone else really does after he's gone. I guess Glenn was just more popular with people. When Negan killed Glenn, he didn't know him. He picked someone at random to set an example. He didn't think of the effect it would have because he didn't care. Glenn was a tool for him to hammer home the fact that Rick's group belonged to him now. Negan's guilt comes from all these stories he hears about Glenn, how he took away a kid's father and the effect it's had on him growing up. Even after Negan went on his redemption arc and even made friends with people, he will never be redeemed for what he did to Glenn. He is reminded of it all the time, and good, even though he could be classed as a good guy now, he was a villain, and shouldn't just be forgiven. I like this moment in the final episode where everyone's having a good time and Negan's outside walking past, knowing he can never be a part of that life. He just looks in at Daryl, and Daryl nods, and Negan nods back. It's a moment of understanding. These characters don't like each other, but they understand each other. It's a brief moment of humanity. There's a lot of similarities between Negan and Omni-Man from Invincible, also created by Robert Kirkman. Like Negan, Omni-Man does some crazy things, killing a lot of people because from his perspective, he's doing what's right. But then he learns what he did was wrong and caused a lot of pain around him. He holds on to this guilt, never truly being redeemed, but still trying to do what's right in the end, seeing that his ways were wrong and how flawed he was. They also both beat Stephen Young to a bloody pulp. Negan can try all he wants to be good, but he knows he'll never truly get there. And that leads us to my favorite scene in the entire show. Yeah, you heard that right. Maggie enters the scene, and you can see the guilt straight away wash over Negan's face. He knows how much he's hurt her. He can barely even look at her. Maggie starts off by saying she can never forgive him, finally coming to the conclusion that she never will. It's a great moment for her also. Negan understands this, and in a way is relieved that she's saying this. Maggie talks about Glenn and how much she loved him, and also how Negan mocked him whilst killing him. She brings up how grateful she is that Negan saved her son, but she can never forgive him for Glenn. Maggie knows deep down in her heart Negan is trying to move on and make a better life for himself. She knows he's not the man he once was. Though still, she can never let go of that pain she feels. But maybe, she can let go of that anger. She can't get closure for Glenn's death, but she can on that hate she feels towards Negan. She accepts that though she may never forgive Negan, he has changed as a person. Negan doesn't say a word. No joke, no snarky comment. He just accepts what Maggie has to say. And that's it. 
This is the end for his character arc. He's a changed man, but will always have that guilt of the villain he once was. It's like Daredevil says, there is a small light of good in everyone, and the most important thing to do is try again. Negan tried again. He got a second chance. He did a lot of stupid shit, maybe even evil, but he had that small piece of good in him that allowed him to try again. He did villainous acts and has to live with them. Hold on to that pain and punish himself for it. He's a fantastic character that you really do feel bad for, and I truly believe the most sympathetic villain ever created. Until I talk about Mr. Freeze, then he's the most sympathetic villain ever created. <laughs>